Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our first webinar for the Senior Services Network of Southeastern Pennsylvania. We are a group of professionals dedicated to helping seniors and their families navigate many different life issues from their estate planning to their financial planning to helping them navigate healthcare needs and concerns. And tonight to kick us off, we are going to be talking about covering the cost of healthcare in retirement. And we have two panelists with us tonight who are going to be sharing from their expertise. Um, Kristen has over 25 years of experience in the insurance industry and loves helping clients know and understand their risks. Um, for her, it really comes down to choices. And Kristen knows this from personal experience and dealing with situations with her family, um, that really having choices can really impact your quality of life. So professionally, she's very focused on helping people understand their options and to make sure that they're in the health plan that's right for them. Um, so Kristen, we really appreciate you taking the time tonight to be with us. Um, Kristen's also very busy, very involved in the community and giving back however she can. Um, she's on the leadership committee for her son's Boy Scout troop. And um, she's also involved very heavily in different school initiatives as a board member and in managing a scholarship fund that was established for the benefit of her sister. Um, in her free time, she enjoys eating cheese, which I think many of us do. Um, <laughs> and Kristen, thank you so much for joining us today. Kristen, if you could unmute yourself, that would be really helpful. If not, I think I might be able to do it here. And um, Okay, now I can, I think. Are we good? Can everybody hear me? Okay, great. So my name is Kristen Druger, as um, Jess had said, and we're gonna talk today a little bit about the ABCs and what I call Ds of Medicare. So again, my name is Kristen Druger. I'm a partner and co-owner with Health Insurance Personalized. We work with clients every day regarding their health care needs, whether it be in Medicare and the retirement section of their life or stage of their life, or if it's the under 65. As we've heard before, there's a lot of different options and costs associated with it. So my goal today is hoping that everybody can at least learn something new that they may not have known before about Medicare. So we'll start with a little bit of a definition of what is Medicare. So Medicare is in essence health insurance for people ages 65 and older. There are people with certain disabilities as we, you may have heard in a previous um, conversation about that and also people that have ESRD, which is end-stage renal disease. It's offered through a a several options, whether it's private companies or companies under contract with Medicare. We're gonna go through today and talk a little bit about what is part A, part B, part C, part D, all these alphabet soup of Medicare, and also something called a Medicare supplement. That's also referred to as a Medigap plan. Those are um, interchangeable terms that we'll hear. The, as we talked about in previous um, conversations, Medicare only covers up to a certain part, which is why this topic of healthcare and retirement is so important to talk about because you wanna understand where Medicare ends and where you have to, out of your own pocket, look to fund any sort of healthcare costs that we may have. So let's get started with that. So Medicare, they call it original Medicare, is part A and part B. This is what your Medicare card would look like, the, what I refer to as the red, white, and blue card. It'll tell you when your effective dates for part A and part B. They may not be the same. You may see them as different depending on when you needed to uh, look at other options for part B. We talked about some coverage in some coverages that you may have if you're thinking about retiring. So this is where this comes into play, enabling your part A and part B. Part A in 90% of people will start immediately at age 65, unless you, you go in and say you don't want Medicare, which is very rare. Part A will be your primary. And then if you're still working, your insurance through your employer will be a supplement. If not, it's part B, and then you would also look at a supplement um, at that point. 
So what does original Medicare cover? It covers inpatient hospital, it covers skilled nursing facilities, but only up to 180 days in a skilled nursing facility. After that, it's you're on your own as far as the, how you're gonna fund that skilled nursing um, costs that are associated with it. There's some hospice and again, some home health care, but again, limited in the amount that's covered and definitely a certain amount of days that you can have a home health care after you've been in the hospital. In 2021, these numbers change each year, but for 2021, your Part A deductible will be $1,484. And then what we're looking at in Part B, Part B is doctor services, any outpatient, any lab work that's required, medical equipment, that sort of thing. Part B only covers 80% with Medicare. That's why they've come up with other options outside of Medicare uh, and the original Medicare for Part B to supplement the additional 20% because there is no maximum on the 20% that any person in any given period of time is eligible or is required to pay. So one example of that, people ask me this all the time, if you go to the doctor and the doctor charges $250, Part B will cover 80% of that and then you're responsible for the additional amount. Not to be confused with the deductible, so premium amounts and there's deductible amounts and what you're required to pay is your portion of the Part B insurance. So Part B premiums every year or every month are usually $148.50 for 20, 2021. And the deductible for Part B is $203. Now that could change depending on the amount of income somebody has, but for the average person, you're looking at about $148 for Part B for a premium. Part A, no premium, just that deductible that goes every year. So Part D, Part D is something that people need to have um, depending on the plan they choose when they're enabling their Medicare at age 65 or if they no longer have insurance through their employer. You wanna look at uh, the cost of the prescription drug and this Part D plan is required if you're eligible for Medicare. And if you don't enroll in these Part, B, Part D plans, there are some late enrollment penalties that you want to be aware of as time goes on. So any out-of-pocket costs that are associated with that, you're looking at a monthly premium, a deductible, a copay. This is why it's very important to understand if you're looking at retiring, what could be involved in the costs. Because most people, this Part D plan is where the expense is. And this is the part that people are, it's very different from your group health insurance or individual under age 65 health insurance. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how that can be, how it is different and what we should be aware of. So Part D coverage phases. Coverage phases are the initial, the coverage gap and the catastrophic coverage. Those different three phases have to do with how much are paid out for a particular prescription or a drug. As you can see through this grid that we have up here, the difference in the deductible, which is the first $445, that does change year to year, the deductible. That's not something that an insurance carrier um, mandates. It's, it's something that is regulated by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. So that will change. That's your responsibility or the individual's responsibility. There's co-pays, there's co-insurance that's involved, and it's based on the drug tier. Um, the coverage gap, or the, what people refer to, and many of your, you might hear about people going in the donut hole. It's a part where most people will be spending more money on their drugs, 25% if you have a brand name drug or 25% of a generic drug. And this could be a whole conversation, a whole hour of understanding these different phases, but it's something you should be aware of and something that you should know is gonna be part of a cost in Medicare and retirement. And again, this catastrophic phase that we're talking about. And these thresholds are based on how much is paid out, whether it's the insurance carrier or the consumer, how much they are paying out at each different phase. So they've come up with some alternatives to, med to original Medicare. One alternative 
is Part C, which is a Medicare Advantage plan. Those, again, are simultaneous. People might say, oh, I have Part C. Well, that's also a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, that encompasses your original Medicare Part A and Part B. And then it also, it, in some cases, involves a drug plan, so the Part D that satisfies the Part D option as well. We're going to go into a little bit more about that in further along in the presentation. And then there's another option that you can look at. I, I tell clients it's really two paths that you can go down and you want to understand where the advantages and uh, disadvantages are in either path that you choose. So a Medigap plan or a Medicare supplement plan, that is something that covers truly that 20% gap in coverage. That's where they came up with the Medigap plan. So if you remember back from when we talked earlier, Part B pays 80%, you have that 20% that is not covered. That's where you would look at a Medigap plan or a Medicare supplement plan. What do you want to consider when you're looking at these options and the path that you want to go down? You want to factor in, do I have chronic illnesses? Is this something that um, I have, I'll just say diabetes or a heart issue that's involved where I want to know my costs and have a more um, budgeted projection of where my healthcare costs are? That's one path that you can go down. What if I sign up when I'm eligible, even if I have COBRA? That is something that you definitely want to do so that you avoid any sort of late penalties, either on the Part B side or the Part D side. And don't, whatever you do, please do not postpone enrolling in Part D. D is in dog for drug plans. Many people think, and I see them every day in my practice, think because I don't take any drugs, why would I need a drug plan? But it is a law that you must be in a Part D plan to avoid any late enrollment penalties. So you need to be in some sort of plan uh, even if you don't go, you're not taking any drugs on a consistent basis, just so that you uh, satisfy that requirement to have a Part D credible coverage plan in, within your portfolio. When are you eligible for Medicare? Eligibility starts the month that you turn 65, and you can in, start enrolling prior, three months prior, or three you have three months after your eligibility month of the month that you turn 65. Uh, that does not mean that you have to enroll in A and B. If you are currently working, you should reach out to somebody and see if it's a, a plan that you want to keep and continue using for the group plan. If not, then this is some option to go on there. Usually, nine out of 10 times, a Medicare supplement may be less expensive than continuing paying for your own health care out of pocket. Not a group plan per se, but your own individual health care. So late enrollments, we talked a little bit about this, so I won't elaborate or I won't uh, continue on that, but there are penalties in some of these areas if you don't enroll when you're initially, the IEP means initial enrollment period. Uh, if you don't enroll, there could be late penalties, unless you're in another plan, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. How to enroll. There's really three main ways that you can enroll in any of these plans. Online, over the phone, or in person at your local Social Security office. That's how you enroll in Medicare. When you want to look at the different options, you I'll take some time now to discuss why would you want to get a broker involved, an insurance broker involved in your decision-making process? One, it's no cost to you as the consumer. There's no cost to you. And you can take advantage of somebody's knowledge who does this every day, all day long, and can help you navigate through what I call the maze of Medicare. Um, so that is seek out somebody that has some expertise that can walk you along that. Because if you do the wrong thing, it may be costly down the road. Uh, and wrong is different for each person and each individual has their own idea of what is important to them and their priorities as it involves their health care. So take time to seek somebody out, especially if it's no cost to you as the individual. Uh, and then you really want to take time to compare the plans. And even though a premium may be zero or a lower cost premium, what does that cover? What are my restrictions? Am I involved in a network? that I have to be a part of? Do my doctors take it? 
Are there drug plans that yes, they might be included, but what does that really mean? Am I limited in the tiers that I have available to me, the co-pays and that, uh, and those are little things. That's why it says, hint, use an insurance broker. That would be your best bet. And an independent insurance broker. What I mean by that is somebody that's not affiliated with a particular carrier. Look at somebody that is can look across the market and see what the best plan is for your particular situation. So we talked previously about what are some of the healthcare costs in retirement, but these are an annual average cost for a person at age 65. These again, estimated numbers, but we've um, used these numbers from different areas to see what we can come up with, with some basic ideas and basic plans. So you can go through and look at the things that aren't covered under Medicare. And even if they are covered under a Medicare plan or a Medicare Advantage plan, there's not a robust benefit that's involved there. So out of pocket, we're looking at about $7,000 a year. So whether you want to self-fund that or look at some things in retirement and start saving that, that's where we look at a skilled financial planner to help you make sure you're ready for that retirement age. So we talked a little bit about what is referred to as IRMA or the income related monthly adjustment amount. I like to put this out here just to give people an awareness that if you make over a certain amount of money within your prior year, which a lot of people do before they retire, you may have some sort of additional, plan, additional payment that you're required to make on a Part B monthly premium. Some people are shocked by that when they get information from Social Security or Medicare saying, oh, by the way, you made a certain amount of money, there's an additional um, premium that you need to pay for that. So this is just something to be aware of and look at the different brackets based on your tax, your tax return and where you fall in that bucket. So again, an, an, something that you need to be aware of as you're planning for retirement costs. And if you're try retiring before age 65, we talked previously about what are your three options, employer provided coverage, COBRA, and individual or family coverage. These again are things that a broker can help you with, an individual broker, and we certainly work with a lot of our clients, one person turning 65, the other person may be younger and they don't qualify for Medicare. What do we do? How do we make sure that healthcare is covered through that? So we have some creative ideas either through the um, what we've referred to as Obamacare previously is now referred to as Penny in Pennsylvania. Same type of thing. It's the healthcare marketplace. But again, a broker, health insurance personalized could help you through that as an option moving forward. When you do retire, these are the questions we get a lot about from clients who are currently working. And they say, well, I don't want to retire at 65. I don't want to take my Social Security at 65. It becomes more and more of uh, people working later in life. So what do we do? Don't worry. Don't panic. We'll, we'll be able to answer any of those questions uh, for you for Medicare Part A. Part A will be most likely your primary insurance if you go into the hospital. And then your group coverage would be the secondary insurance. When the group coverage ends, when you retire and you may not want to go on COBRA is when you can enroll in what is called a special enrollment period. And that means that an event has happened in your life, which would be retirement, and now you're able to go and go without any underwriting or any penalties into a Medicare plan. We talk a little bit about open enrollment and this is why it's a good time to talk to people. Um, because open enrollment begins October 15th and it ends on December 7th. What does that mean? Uh, you, what can you do if you're, a if you're currently on Medicare and you're a Medicare recipient? You want to look at the plan that you're in currently, see if it's something that you should look at and look at, at your health needs and see if we need to look in there. The other part too is make sure that you look at your financial situation. Has it changed? Do we have some options that we can look at to still provide very good, solid healthcare, but maybe there's something that we can look at that may be less expensive. Maybe we need to look at another prescription plan or a different Advantage plan. 
The other thing that it, some people don't realize that if you move or a loved one moves into a nursing home, that is also considered a special enrollment period. And there may be other plans out there that are um, geared especially for people in a skilled nursing home. And then your coverage needs. Do we want to be in network? Do we want to be out of network? Are prescriptions in that? Are there any additional benefits included in a plan? Those are some of the questions that we ask during open enrollment. And again, please um, feel free to reach out to any independent insurance broker. This is the time that they'll be able to help you out. Um, when you're on a Medicare supplement or a Part D, what do you want to look at? We talked about premiums across carriers. People don't realize that for Medicare and for Medicare supplements, there's a lot of different alphabet soup of different plans that are available for Medicare supplements. One of them is Plan G, G is in George. Um, not to be confused with parts, parts A, B, C, and D. There's also plans with a bunch of letters associated with them, which means different plan designs for each letter. Those are the same regardless of the carrier. But what could change is this top um, era, this top bullet that I'm mentioning is the premiums could change across each carrier. And even though the coverages are the same, Plan G could be Plan G, could be Plan G, regardless of the carrier. So why pay more premium for somebody in those areas? And those are things we could help you out with. Again, prescription plans. Those formularies change every year. And what drugs are in what formulary and what tier changes every year with all the different carriers. So that's something you should look at, if not every year on a um, maybe a and every other year, every three to five year basis to make sure you're in the right plan. Um, and then we talked about what if you're eligible and your spouse is not. Let's look at that and see what options we have out there. So with that, as we mentioned before, my name is Kristen Druger. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have regarding any of your Medicare questions or health insurance questions. This is my contact information. Um, if you just want to ask, what should I be planning? No question is ever anything that we can't answer or try and find the answer for. So we'll open this up right now to any questions and answers, and Jess will help us monitor that. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, at the moment, no questions have come through on the chat, but we'll give everyone a few moments to put things in. Perhaps will we do that? Kristen, would you mind sharing a little bit about our upcoming webinars? Yes, we have several upcoming webinars. Um, we have our webinar in October, which deals with downsizing. Um, we also have our other webinar in um, November regarding the holidays. I don't have the specifics on the dates at this point, but you do you just have that? Yeah, I'd be happy to share those. One moment. And I might be able to pull up my other slides that I have. So on the 20th of October, we're going to be talking about right sizing tips and tricks. And um, that will be with Darla Pompilio from Your Tasks Our Time. And then we'll also be having Elaine Siofani, join us from Keller Williams Real Estate to talk about which home repairs and improvements are best to do before you sell. Um, then in November, on November 17th, we're going to have Anita Campbell talk about personal information security for seniors and cybersecurity. Um, and then a representative from Day-to-Day -day Financial Management, either Don Wright or Mary Slack, or potentially both of them, will be coming to speak with us about the latest scams and what to do if you're a victim. Um, and we'll end it with Linda Ryder of Bucks County SPCA talking about how to adopt a shelter pet um, and just going through some of the things for that. A fun fact we learned today at an earlier meeting is that you can actually adopt an outdoor cat for $10, which was kind of a fun fact for me to learn today. Um, but anyway, so we're really looking forward to these upcoming events and different Events in the future will focus on observing changes in loved ones and what to do, the different levels of care, you know, from personal care to memory care and how that works. Um, and in future months, we'll have presentations about issues involving estate planning and guardianship. Um, I, I realized I didn't really get a chance to introduce myself tonight. I was so excited to introduce Beth and Kristen, but 
I am an estate planning attorney and we have some other attorneys who are also members of the group. And so we want to get into the weeds and talk more about substantive issues that may be of interest to um, people in the group. So really looking forward to having lots of good content this year. Okay, let's see if we've got some questions. It looks like we do have some activity in the chat. Um, we've got a lot of thank yous. I'm not seeing a ton of questions at this point. Um, but as Kristen has alluded to, you know, I'm sure that any of us in the group would be happy to answer questions about specific areas. Um, Kristen, thank you so much for sharing your expertise on insurance with us tonight. I definitely learned a lot and I'm sure everyone listening did too. Thank you, Jess. I appreciate it. Appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Thanks.